$25 billion. Not only is this an absolutely astronomical figure, but it's also the number representing NASA's entire 2022 budget. As part of the White House's 2022 federal spending bill, this time totaling $6 trillion, a record $24.8 billion is dedicated to NASA. All in all, that number is 6.6% higher than 2021's budget and has some significant changes to it. With that in mind, it leaves a big question. What exactly is NASA's 2022 space budget? Here's the breakdown. To put it simply, most of NASA's funding is directed towards human exploration and operations. As a result, NASA expects a whopping $10.9 billion to flow into its exploration ventures and related operations. For deep space exploration systems, NASA requested a total of $6.88 billion. As for spaceflight operations, the figure came to $4.02 billion. As described by the agency, NASA's deep space exploration systems involve funding the Orion Crewed Spacecraft (SLS) rocket, the modernization of the Kennedy Space Center, and the exploration missions. These few funding areas are critical in keeping NASA alive as a moderately independent, government-funded entity with its vested interest in first-party rocket development and construction. Deep space exploration is heavily dependent on growing government funding, and that's because a lot has already made its way there. When dealing with incomplete programs that have already absorbed billions of dollars, one of NASA's only hopes is that more funding is needed to push progress over the edge. The same concept applies to the $4 billion towards spaceflight operations, which, when combined with deep space exploration systems, complete the near $11 billion towards human exploration and operations. In addition to what's listed for deep space systems, NASA also explicitly states that funding will also make its way towards the human landing system, which the agency insists will provide billions of dollars over the five-year period. Additionally, a portion of this funding is meant for the gateway to leverage international partners and communities to create a long-term, moon-based replacement to the slowly retiring International Space Station. Finally, of course, there's also money budgeted to build the Orion and SLS spacecraft, leverage the ISS for low Earth orbit research, and continue providing contracts to commercialized U.S. contractors. This whole budget category is massive, and it's for a reason. The funding within HEO goes towards America's ideas for future space exploration and the potential to live in low Earth orbit and beyond. Without this money, NASA has no chance whatsoever of creating a government-subsidized alternative to the dozens of future public alternatives. However, that's not the only big buy in this budget. We've also got a rather hefty $7.9 billion explicitly dedicated to the wonderfully broad topic of science. For an 8.9% year-over-year increase, you'd hope for a bit more information than that. Well, that's why they've fortunately provided it. A total of $2.3 billion will go to Earth science, $3.2 billion to planetary science, $1.4 billion for astrophysics, $175 million towards supporting the James Webb Space Telescope, $800 million dedicated to heliophysics, and $109 million for biological and physical science. Those are quite a few categories, and in all, NASA expects to support 105 space missions, 10,000 U.S. scientists, and 3,000 research awards. For example, Earth Science heavily supports the Earth System Observatory, its first four missions, and the start of multiple programs to develop Earth-studying builds. Planetary Science focuses primarily on a Mars sample return mission incorporated with international partners in four years. Additionally, planetary defense has an impact, literally, as with the DART satellite redirect and other new missions. Astrophysics $1.4 billion will go towards the Nancy Grace Roman Space Telescope, the dark matter and energy studying spacecraft, alongside recent Earth System Explorers programs. Finally, heliophysics funds multiple sun-centric probes and explorer craft, while biological and physical science will study the impact of space on, well, biological and physical systems. While $7.9 billion seems like a lot to dedicate to such a generic topic as science, there's a lot that NASA plans to do with the money. Investigating the sun, dark matter, the origins of the Earth, how people would react living in space, Mars samples, and so much more. There's a lot in the works from NASA's end, and it looks pretty fascinating. 
Hey, that's kind of like space technology, which increased a whopping 29.5% year over year to mark $1.4 billion of NASA's requested budget. While the exploration and operations funding is likely the most exciting bit to most people, space technology doesn't deserve to be missed out on. Even though it's only 13% of the former's budget, there's a lot in the works, not just for the future of technology. After all, NASA designates $420 million to innovation partnerships and small business research grants. Of course, that's not the only piece of funding. Half a billion goes towards ground and flight testing, solar electric power thrusters, and cryogenic fluid management. Those thrusters look really cool, and that's because they could potentially power small craft through solar power down the road. However, there's also another half billion towards disruptive exploration technology through lunar payloads and commercial lunar programs. In all, space technology's budget looks heavily skewed towards building technology for the future, investing in prospective ideas before they're well known. That's kind of like the concept behind the Safety, Security and Mission Services, or SSMS, and the Construction and Environmental Restoration, or CECR. These two acronyms take in about $3.4 billion for a 2.2% increase over last year. While space technology might be more of a developmental budget category, SSMS and CECR are all about an even more entertaining idea, land and building management. I know, it's so exciting. Joking aside, without the $3.4 billion flowing into these areas, NASA wouldn't have much funding towards safety systems, administration, management, and construction. Many of the vast buildings required for NASA's future come from the CECR budget, and you can't have any admin without SSMS. And like that, we're down to just two funding categories, aeronautics research and STEM engagement. The latter is simple. It's a 15.7% increase to $147 million worth of funding, focused on building student opportunities and raising the next generation of space-loving maniacs. As for aeronautics research, NASA was much more specific with five significant programs outlined. The $302 million Integrated Aviation Systems, the $244 million Advanced Air Vehicles, the $148 million Transformative Aero Concepts, the $117 million Aerosciences Evaluation and Test Capabilities, and lastly, the $105 million Airspace Operations and Safety Program. Put simply, IAS, the first program, funds sustainable flight demonstrators and the first flights of the X-59 LBFD and X-57 Maxwell all-electric aircraft. In addition, AAV funds advanced engine development, quickly manufacturing composites, advanced wing testing, new vehicle designs, and new data validation methods. TAC supports aviation concept development, specifically on zero-emission projects, using new tools and experiments. Lastly, AETC and AOS support wind tunnel infrastructure and FAA partnered efficiency changes. All in all, Aeronautics pulled in 10.4% more funding, making it the third fastest growing of the six NASA budgeting categories. However, each funding program had its reasoning for being cut or boosted as much as it was. Take the James Webb Space Telescope, which received a massive 58% cut to funding. While that might seem drastic at first, remember that most funding now moves directly toward monitoring and managing the craft rather than paying for workers and materials to construct the actual thing. On the other end of the spectrum, there's the Human Landing System, which boasts a whopping 41% boost to funding. But as SpaceX has publicly completed more successful missions and the like, with the company's growing technological prowess, they've moved slowly away from NASA and the U.S. government. This 41% increase was a response to that, helping to potentially keep SpaceX on board with future trips and landings atop the lunar surface. And as such, although the expectations for this year's NASA budget have significantly varied, we're left with a pretty solid boost to the categories that need it. There's nothing too outrageous in this budget, as there are hundreds of programs with funding plan, dozens of significant missions in the works, and only a 6.6% boost to the overall monetary value. So what do you think? Does NASA deserve more money to play around with building our future in the stars? Or do you also feel the current budget is pretty balanced? Let us know your thoughts below. Make sure to stay tuned for future videos, and we'll see you next time.